Hey guys, today we're going to solve lead code number 930 binary subarrays with sum. We're given a binary array and we need to return how many non-empty subarrays have sum s, which is our other input. So here you can see another example. Okay, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to have an helper function that returns the amount of subarrays that add up to at most a certain number that we pass as input. Okay. So that's going to be useful because it's going to allow you, us to transform the binary subarrays with some problem into a easier problem. So instead of finding all of the binary subarrays with which have a certain precise sum, we now need to only find the number of binary subarrays with at most a certain sum. So you can see that that is, that is a relaxation of the original constraints, so it's easier. Okay, so the way we're going to use that helper function is we're going to return the number of subarrays that add up to at most s minus, so we subtract from this, the number of subarrays of the same original input that add up to at most s minus one. Okay, so this, what this is going to do is it's going to return precisely the number of subarrays that of our original a array that add up to s. Okay, so now all that's left is to implement the at most function. And to implement the at most function, we're going to keep a counter of the current rolling sum that while we are going through the array. And when the current sum, running sum, goes above s, what we do is we move the start of our current window further on the array. Okay, so first of all, if the sum is negative, there is definitely not any subarray that has a at most negative sum. So we just return a zero. Then we initialize some variables, the result, which we're later going to return, the start of our interval that we're currently looping on, and the length of the array. This is just for readability and convenience. So now we store the current sum of the subarray that we are looking at, so the window or the interval that we are looking at, and initially it is zero. And now we loop with the end pointer of our interval to the end of the array with a classic for loop. And what we do is we add to the current sum of our subarray that we are considering the end. So this is the element that is entering into our window. So it needs to be added to the rolling sum of our window, our subarray, Not right? And so now what we do is we check if the current sum of subarray is more than s. We don't want that, right? Because we want all of the subarrays which are at most s. We don't want those that are more than s. So we check. While the sum of the subarray is more than s, what we do is we remove the last element from our window. And to remove it, we need to subtract it from the current sum of the subarray. To do that, we remove the element located at start. And also, as I shortened, we want to move start forward because you know when we are removing one element, we are starting from the element after. So we also want to do start plus plus, and we do it here as a shorthand. So this is shorter than two different instructions. Right, so now we want to add all of the arrays that have ended in this current iteration. And so that's just the length of the interval that goes from end to start. And this is the formula that you use to calculate the length of an interval, which ends at end at start at start. Right, so that's it. Uh, I'm going to submit the solution to show you that it works. And just to give credit to the people who deserve it, this is not my solution. This is Lee215 solution. He's a great competitive programmer. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching and bye.